first program of the first session is uh, the director of the school will give an introductory speech. Um, first of all, uh, praise to the Buddha Shakyamuni. Um, um, uh, first of all, to those who have participated in uh, this program organized by Sarajevo Secondary School to celebrate His Holiness' uh, 88th birth anniversary and to uh, express gratitude for his kindness. Um, and to the chief guest, uh, Professor Samdong Rinpoche, Love something then, some don't which I love something then. And um, the representative of the settlement and also the Chief Justice and, and all the guest members. Um, I'm going to give a brief background information about um, the uh, organization of this today's program. In every society, uh, um, we know that everyone has a uh, distinct language and culture in every society. And to, to preserve and promote one's own culture is also the responsibility of the people in that particular uh, society. And for us, Tibetan, uh, it's our um, freedom and responsibility to preserve and promote our uh, rich culture and tradition. And also in Western countries, uh, it is similar for them to preserve their own culture and traditions. Um, in our monastery, uh, um, many of our senior monks uh, have, um, as a result of their uh, immense effort to establish such a platform to study and to preserve Tibetan culture, but the uh, difficulty they face uh, now is, for an example, if we want to um, if we want to make a playground and in every monastic uh, schools and monasteries what His Holiness actually uh, advises is that we should Although we have deep uh, knowledge, although we impart education on 
uh, deep knowledge and education of the those uh, great Indian pandits or scholars. Um, Uh, in over and over time, His Holiness uh, has stressed a lot to uh, the monks in the monastic community to pay more attention to uh, modern education, not only our uh, traditional um, education such as uh, the uh, Indian thoughts. Um, if you check on the uh, curriculum of the Seraj Secondary School, the objectives of the uh, Seraj Secondary School is that once the student from this uh, school graduate from this uh, school, it's not our uh, um, objectives or aim to let to um, to create. Uh, condition uh, for those who graduate from our secondary school to join another uh, colleges to f uh, f uh, uh, for uh, their further education, but also but to Um, the uh, education policy introduced by Indian government education department uh, um, it hasn't been uh, helpful not only uh, for the uh, government or the people itself but also uh, to the entire uh, um, global community As uh, in, in Tibet since 2008, there's been a changes in policy, education policy, that uh, the every Tibetan student should uh, study their education based on Chinese language, and there had been a, a lot of protests against this uh, new policy and and I had the opportunity to ask one of the students who protested against the Chinese new education policy why um, you actually participated in this protest? And he he answered that uh, that we are not given uh, a freedom or right to uh, study uh, based on our own mother tongue. That's that's the reason that we uh, are not happy with the new education policy. And it has been about two months since I started working in this, this school as a director. And there is a lot of difficulties um, that we are facing. And I tried to find out uh, what is the causes of these difficulties. And uh, the former officials or the people who, who work for this uh, school also discuss this matter with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And since I, I assumed this position, I personally uh, visited the Ramsala and to meet uh, some Norim Buche and uh, I introduced him the objectives 
of the uh, Sergei Secondary School and everything. Um, what I feel about is uh, from uh, uh, first standard to eighth standard, I feel it is important to have uh, most of the subject uh, uh, should be taught in Tibetan language or Tibetan based on Tibetan culture. Uh, I think it is significant. And also in the ninth standard and the tenth standard, standard uh, and uh, and also providing uh, materials for those who study in the uh, uh, ninth standard and eighth standard, providing them with every uh, resources like books in Tibetan uh, la uh, uh, language and and provide them every necessary um, materials to continue their uh, study or uh, study on. Tibetan uh, culture and language. And what His Holiness has been uh, continuously uh, advising monastics in the uh, last few decades that, that uh, there had been uh, Um, and we have uh, great Indian scholars to um, to uh, to write uh, commentaries on uh, Buddha's words. But for now, uh, His Holiness has not only the knowledge of the ancient Buddhist studies, but also the modern uh, educations and the modern um, and I think. Um, his Holiness the Dalai Lama uh, is actually far more um, better in this uh, field of education because, his, because of his vast knowledge not only in ancient uh, traditional Indian um, Buddhism but also modern, uh, uh, modern educations. And I can, uh, <clears throat> I, I uh, strongly believe whatever is uh, whatever Samdhan Buche has uh, been doing so far and uh, giving talk to uh, the Tibetan people. It's not only uh, uh, his own sort of uh, personal wish, but to follow his uh, master's instructions and advices. And uh, we have two different kinds of teachers, one who teach uh, ancient traditional education and one who teach the modern education. And the, both of these two different teachers have their own uh, responsibilities, different uh, responsibilities. And uh, one of the common notion in our uh, community is that uh, what kind of job I can get and where can I get that job after completing uh, high school. And the modern education, the teacher who taught, who teaches my modern education, his aim is to uh, create a job for the students after the student completes uh, plus two education, uh, graduate from the uh, 11th stand, uh, standard, 12th standard, sorry. And uh, the teacher who teach uh, ancient uh, studies, uh, his responsibility is to make the student uh, a good student with good manner. And, um, and in most of the Western uh, colleges, uh, universities, uh, the main uh, objectives of those uh, modern uh, institutes is to provide uh, a, to uh, to provide or to create a job for those um, students. Their aim is to educate 
the students and the basis of how uh, those students could get a better job once they completed their studies. And, and therefore, the, uh, I think it is very important for our school to be uh, self-reliant and to face the challenges, uh, the modern challenges. In modern education, we have subjects, uh, uh, we have a very rare subjects that has a connection or relation to the um, uh, uh, our um, good manners and behaviors and the moralities. Uh, for, 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 for doctors, like when, uh, when they teach their medical students, they teach how to help people, how to treat patients. But when actually they are implementing their education, whatever they have learned, it is all about uh, earning monies. And uh, for us, I think... I think, I think there should be uh, Buddhist terminologies uh, in our basic uh, textbooks, uh, textbooks that are uh, taught in uh, primary schools so that the student would be more familiar with this, uh, our ancient studies and their terminologies. Uh, and uh, His Holiness has uh, wrote a book uh, uh, which is like a condensed edition of all the um, uh, important points of the uh, uh, Buddha's sutras that are translated into Tibetan. And I think in, uh, we should include the uh, stories of great uh, Buddhist scholars and Buddhas in our um, story books of the students. Uh, I recognize this um, program or this um, conference very significant. And I um, hope to implement um, if I condensed all the uh, teachings or advices of His Holiness the Dalai Lama in one part, um, that the five different five different risks that we are facing in today's world. The first one, the overpopulations. With rapid um, increase in population, um, uh, we are naturally going to face a lot of conflicts and difficulties. The second risk or threat is inequality, inequality in um, um, financial or economic inequality and there are there is huge gap that we are seeing today between the rich and the poor uh, people even in the monastic community uh, we are seeing that gap uh, in the monastic area we are seeing a lot of great buildings um, and uh, right next to the monastic uh, area we are seeing poor Indian villages with very poor houses and scientists haven't paid enough uh, emphasis or put a lot of input emphasis on uh, preservation or conserving the uh, environment and initially they 
they claim that whatever they have produced, it has not, uh, it doesn't affect the environment. But and the nuclear weapons that they have created, uh, what would happen to these uh, weapons in the coming um, times or years? And that those um, weapon, nuclear weapon, mass destructive weapons are used to uh, wage war against one nation to another. And And those who were actually behind all those great wars always uh, they, um, they don't face any um, um, uh, today's that uh, people use the religion as uh, an excuse for making a troubles and these days uh, lots of uh, people lots of um, uh, people in um, foreign countries they claim that they are they have great power or realizations they claim they are a religious person and they create at the same time a lot of uh, problems and troubles in the societies. And there are five risks or threats that we are facing and we have to uh, and we have uh, today planted around 200 uh, trees today, plant uh, 201 trees today uh, for the uh, long life of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And in celebration of the 80th birth anniversary of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, um, except those who propitiated a Shukdin uh, uh, spirit. Uh, it is a great celebration for entire um, uh, peace-loving people all over the world to celebrate this event. And there's going to be a mass celebration all over the world to, uh, to in memory or in gratitude to His Holiness's uh, service to entire humanity. And uh, Today, I want, uh, on behalf of the entire uh, members of Sarajay Secondary School, I want to make a plea or request to entire to all the people um, um, that, when you celebrate uh, the uh, birth anniversary, 88th birth anniversary of His Holiness Dalai Lama, please do not um, eat a non-veg food and. Uh, and try to make offerings to all the uh, animals and uh, all, uh, poor people all over the world. Because then we have uh, um, uh, the second program of the second session. Um, is a speech by His Holiness uh, uh, from Professor Samdhan Rinpoche. Professor Samdhan uh, Among the um, guests, 
uh, if anyone has uh, their own uh, busy schedule and has have to do something, they can leave now. Um, respective um, monastic community and uh, the students and the students uh, of the Sereje Secondary School and uh, students from the uh, TCV uh, School. Um, uh, the director of the Seraja Secondary, Secondary School personally visited me um, a, a few months back uh, to come here and give talk. Uh, at that time I was not uh, physically well and I was also quite busy that time. I couldn't attend uh, the uh, events. And uh, today, as Loseling Monastery invited me to um, take part in one of the program or meeting, uh, with this opportunity, I uh, came here today. And how the teacher should uh, conduct to um, educate their students. And I was uh, asked to give talk on four different sessions on how to conduct properly uh, as being a teacher and also for the student. And today, uh, the uh, director's speech, the ongoing uh, the system of Seraje uh, Secondary School uh, education policy our education system. And he has presented it with uh, a great um, objectives. And I think um, uh, in Sereji's uh, secondary school's director, his, in his speech, um, he uh, clearly stated that uh, Sereji Secondary is going to implement the new education policies. So uh, it seems to it seems uh, you have a great uh, objectives um, in coming years. So I think um, I wouldn't be that much helpful in that regard if you are really. Uh, serious in implementing this great uh, new education policy. And uh, I, I'm going to repeat all those I've already uh, been uh, saying in many different places. And there's nothing new. I As students who study in primary school, what they uh, here, normally, there would be some difference in uh, my speech. In today's world, there are different um, mental dispositions and suggestions, way of thinking. If we were to summary it, it can be uh, abbreviated in two uh, points. Uh, uh, around 90 to 95 percent of the people believe that modern education is uh, most essential and that people should uh, follow it and study it. And Around 40% of the people, 4% around, sorry, 4% of the people believe that traditional education is more essential for today's uh, world. And there has been a, a great a difference and gave in uh, people 
having these two different beliefs. And uh, actually it's not about the numbers and how many people uh, that believe in uh, each of these different uh, perspectives. Today's uh, uh, period of time, it's not about to um, extinguish, or if we look at the um, ecological um, status of the world, it doesn't seem to last that long. If we Look at the, uh, this, the condition of the air pollution of today's world. Around eight, uh, 2018, 2019 and 20, uh, people, would not, people will not be able to tolerate the effects of the uh, air pollution around 2018 and 14. This is what uh, the scientists today predicts. And scientists also claim that that we cannot face this uh, control that, but uh, uh, it wouldn't. Um, it wouldn't cause any lives. But people will uh, be able to adapt with this uh, new uh, uh, circumstances. In all uh, creatures or uh, organ, organisms, uh, the system called immune system, and they claim, although we are very likely to face these great threats around 2007 and 13, but um, we would still, uh, 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 would, we, we, we don't, we wouldn't um, face the extinctions of entire um, humanities and uh, creatures. When it comes to uh, the survival uh, in coming years, uh, there would be more people to follow uh, the ancient or traditional education or way of living as uh, we uh, start to face great threats, uh, most are actually produced by modern uh, technologies and so on. And the topic that I'm going to uh, address today is traditional and modern uh, subjects and teachings methodologies. In those four sessions, uh, the topic that we are going to discuss is the difference between uh, the traditional education and the modern education will be dealing with these two different topics. In this gathering, um, what is called traditional and what is called uh, modernity or modern, uh, we must be uh, clear enough to make distinguish, distinctions between uh, these two different um, things.
I think um, you are more familiar with uh, the word tradition or traditional. Uh, but I'm going to um, uh, talk about the modern education or modernity first. The system or material that we have today, it's not called modern. Modern doesn't mean the things that we possess today. In English, there are two different words contemporary and modernity. Modern, modernization, modernity. Contemporary means our present time. Whatever that we are seeing, experiencing is contemporary. And those, and all those that we are experiencing today doesn't, um, uh, it are not actually the modern or modern or modernity. In today's world, in last. Um, um, many thousand years, the sustenance, sustenance of uh, there has been a sustenance in uh, uh, since many. A thousand years uh, to uh, to today's time, and when we say it, uh, things uh, tend to sustain for such long time. It doesn't mean things are not uh, impermanent or things are permanent. Of course, there is always going to be changes in the transitions. people's thought and their actions since last four centuries there hadn't been um, big changes great changes there had been only slight changes in last 400 years and those changes are like uh, uh, environmental changes and uh, and there hasn't been any immediate uh, changes or in last five four hundred years. And uh, the the. The one that um, wrote great changes in our human civilization is uh, the small island called uh, Europe, and um, it has it is the responsible for today's great changes. An Eastern. Um, And uh, in Middle East and South Eastern part of the world, uh, people haven't um, been active in, uh, in terms of bringing changes in material uh, world. Or, but And also in Western countries, there had been uh, times uh, uh, where 
uh, the religious traditions are flourished, but it uh, gradually deteriorated as time passes. And uh, we, when we talk about uh, the history of the European countries, there had been t different types of uh, centuries with different uh, titles, such as the centuries of Renaissance and so on. And we don't have enough time to deal with all these uh, different topics today. Um, about 300 years ago, around uh, 16th century, and uh, in the European countries, And there has been a uh, 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 system uh, that people are um, very concerned about uh, the religious politics and anyone involved in government um, policy making issues, whenever they want to um, uh, create a resolutions, they have to uh, consult it with the religious figures and the leaderships. And also there have been um, different kinds of conflicts between um, uh, uh, different religious traditions such as Protestants and Catholic traditions. Around a th And uh, there had been a discussion between um, around 545 um, thinkers and leaders. Uh, they held a discussion in Hamburg, in Germany, uh, and uh, they decided to make uh, distinctions between uh, religions and politics and to separate them. Church system and uh, uh, politics. And there has been uh, different uh, definitions people are making uh, for this. Um, the very uh, word secular, some people define it as uh, something that has nothing to do with or something that has no relation whatsoever with um, religion. And, uh, and also people uh, have this notion that religion is a threat uh, to, for the development of the civilization, and such as Karl Marx, who consider religion as a threat for the um, prosperity of the societies. And since then, people started to uh, make distinguish, distinctions between religion and politics. And the people come up with the idea of um, uh, capitalism and socialism. Although uh, it's not uh, verbally existed in ancient um, history, uh, when people mix up all these two different um, systems, uh, there are s a s certain... As, uh, as uh, the Karl Marx claim that serfdom is 
a cause of um, degrade for the uh, societies and their uh, development. When revolution um, And Karl Marx thought, or his belief, that serfdom and system of slavery, slavery and religions are uh, something that should be eliminated or destroyed. In a book called *Thus Capital*, actually there were there used to have a different um, volumes, but these days uh, it is consent condensed in two volumes. When in that book, the author hasn't had enough knowledge of the socialist socialism. And it's it it has a similarity uh, with with this thought of uh, considering of uh, serving other sentient beings, and uh, the other doesn't have full knowledge of the socialism. And and this kind of political. Uh, changes and I ideological changes in the history there had been uh, uh, new changes uh, in the history of humanity which is um, the changes that brought by this uh, modern science and technologies as the mod modern science and technology started to emerge in our society. Uh, 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 people uh, started to think of that uh, the uh, devotion in religious uh, belief is something that people should uh, um, eradicate. And this comes from uh, the emergence of science in our uh, uh, civilizations. And as science and technology um, started to uh, improve in the, our society, and they have uh, got ability to produce uh, the materials that is far more than uh, what people actually need. ancient uh, civilization people have um, uh, people a knowledge of uh, arts and crafts and uh, there are plenty of people who can make uh, different materials um, such as clothes shoes and also during the time of Buddha there were uh, different types of uh, villages where people make uh, produce different materials and the one, uh, the people who make shoes in a village, he could, uh, he can make 
shoes um, for entire people in that village. If we act, there is nothing that we could not achieve. If someone and uh, and uh, for trailer, uh, he can also um, sue. He can stitch clothes for uh, everyone there in his area. Need and facility, supply and demand. When it is balanced, there's, uh, there'll be no uh, reason to deceive one another. When there is balance in supply and the demand in a society, when this changes, uh, supply deceives the uh, demands. The one um, what uh, one can make with their bare hand in one day today um, a single machine can uh, make around hundred in, uh, in an hour And today we have more resources and uh, um, facilities, uh, um, which is more than what ex we actually uh, require or need. So there is always going to be um, remainder uh, that we uh, that people uh, cannot afford to use. So since. Uh, people spend money on all this material they produce. They are obviously going to use them for um, and the owners of the factories they they observe the mentality of the uh, general people and and they observe very carefully uh, what uh, how they can actually sell all their products they have come and uh, they found out that the competition is the only method through which they can sell all their products if they uh, create a, uh, a society of uh, competition. Let's, let's take an, an example of shoes. If all the shoes are like uh, same in shapes and colors and, and people wouldn't be interested in using it for all the time. And, and, and today's world, uh, the owner of the factories uh, created a, a such circumstance that people have different choices, and um, and that one should. Th and they met people to think that one should uh, wear different types of uh, shoes in different occasions and uh, times. And they. 
and therefore they have to uh, create new things or innovate new things. Innovation itself means something uh, that comes from um, uh, earlier uh, period. Uh, it rather means something that is um, new, uh, newly arrived in the society. And Violence and self ground are said to be uh, the synonyms to the modernity. And when we say modern, um, uh, it is something that has nothing to do with the um, um, ancient system or way of living, and such as mushroom. Uh, it doesn't have its own seed. Uh, it comes um, automatically, or it doesn't require any seeds to grow up. So similarly, the modernity is something like uh, mo modern modernity. It doesn't go from the traditional way of living or traditions. And modernity itself is a, a way of thinking. And it started to uh, emerge from uh, Western countries. And, uh, and it comes at the same time when the, uh, the Western countries started to uh, conquer uh, countries in Eastern uh, uh, part of the world. And from this um, uh, um, annexation of uh, other small countries, it not only creates troubles uh, When, as they as they could develop a uh, uh, develop to communicate one another from a uh, far distance they uh, it became more easier for them to um, concur or annex other countries as and uh, as science uh, started to improve and develop in Western countries, uh, they were uh, able to conquer uh, most part of the world. Initially, Uh, if we take an example of Britain, Great Britain, or United Kingdom, and still they are um, controlling some other countries. 
and there is there is to be a saying that uh, uh, no there is no sun never sun never set in the uh, British Empire, and most of the countries had been under the control of uh, Great Britain for so long. And, uh, and those countries where there is the control of uh, Great Britain, uh, there is a, a great uh, emphasis on the uh, importance of these uh, science and technologies. And they uh, deliberately put them into people's um, mindset that uh, modernity is something very essential for the development of uh, their own countries and the environment. There had been two great wars in the world histories, and there had been a loss of so many people in those two um, wars. Let's talk of the uh, atomic bomb that were, that were thrown uh, to uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which caused the lives of many innocent people when it actually took place, I was about four years old. I heard about it a lot, although I cannot <coughs> personally print, say nuclear bomb or something, and I know it by the Chinese term um, um, or atomic bomb. Um, the number of people who lost in uh, those many uh, small uh, uh, wars that um, <sighs> the number of people who lost their lives in uh, many small wars that were fought between uh, small countries uh, dis uh, uh, um, surpass the number of the uh, death, uh, which is actually resulted by a two great world war. I don't remember the exact number. Even today, the result, uh, the condition where people has to live under fear and uh, hesitations. It is uh, the result of all this uh, f conflict. So I'm, as we don't have much time today, I'm going to sum up all of these points. So what modernity has brought changes in today's world, I'm going to uh, talk about this. And what actually the modernity uh, caused to today's world is it creates inequalities. Four different inequalities. The first inequality, uh, inequality between mind and body, and the inequality between uh, self and others. A second point, and and uh, the f and the third um, inequality between self and um, 
uh, individuals and uh, society. And uh, inequality between um, uh, harmony and uh, uh, competitions. And it caused a lot of problems in uh, our societies. And, and as uh, this uh, preceding speaker uh, clearly mentioned about the five dangers that we are facing today, all these five risks or dangers are actually the result of uh, those five great uh, changes uh, that were actually brought up or caused by uh, uh, modernity. Today I'm going to end this uh, talk now as we do not have sufficient time. So I will continue to talk on the issue of inequality in coming sessions. And I will also be talking about the difference uh, between the um, education, uh, modern education and uh, ancient or traditional education. Unless we don't know the uh, definition of modernity clearly, we cannot be able to, we won't be able to distinguish uh, these two different fields of study. We're going to have a tea break for 15 uh, minutes. Uh, uh, in our next, in our next session, I'm going to give. Uh,